Many thanks for joining us. This is News Now on TV360 Nigeria. Security operatives have arrested six suspects who allegedly kidnapped the traditional ruler of Adara Chiefdom in Kacha local government area of Kaduna State. Maywada Galadima, the suspects were paraded on Wednesday at the state headquarters of the Department of State Security Services, DSS. The state director of the DSS, who briefed journalists, said the suspects were tracked and arrested at different locations in Igabi, Soba, Kachia, and Joss in Plateau State. After the traditional ruler was murdered in captivity, the Kana state government declared a 24-hour curfew in the state, which has now been relaxed since Namosi returned. Still in Kaduna, a federal high court has rejected the bail request of the leader of the Islamic movement in Nigeria, Ibrahim El Zagzaki. This means Zagzaki will remain in the custody of the Department of State Services until January 22, 2019, as ordered by Justice Gideon Kuroda. Zagzaki and his wife are facing an eight-count charge bordering on alleged conspiracy, abating culpable homicide and other related offences brought against them by the Kaduna state government. Both defendants have been in jail since December 2015, and Justice Kuruda ruled that, haven't, that they haven't shown any substantial medical evidence to grant them bail in their written application. A civil society organization, Good Governance Advocacy Project, is seeking the probe and prosecution of former President Olushegu Obasanjo and former Minister of Defense General Theophilus Tanjuma. The group says the Odi massacre of November 28, 1999, by the military in Bayelsa State and the killings of civilians in Zaki Biam in October 22, 2001, are cases of war crimes and crimes against humanity. They are urging the International Criminal Court and the United Nations to review the extrajudicial killings that took place during the administration of former President Obasanjo and Danjima as a defense minister. The Good Governance Advocacy Project has submitted petition to the International Criminal Court, ICC, with a view to get justice for the communities that they disseminated during their tenure in office. Our hope is that the International Criminal Court will be able to review and bring the case against Dajuma and Obasajo to trial so that this community can get closure to justice. The Good Governance Advocacy Project is, however, asking the government of President Muhammad Buhari and the ICC why not has been done at this moment to bring these two men for their involvement in crimes against humanity and offenses bordering on war crime? We are wondering if these persons who are above Nigeria are also above the rule of International Criminal Court. It is on this note that we renew our call to Obasajo and Dajuma to hand themselves to the ICC over the massacre of defenseless citizens in the country. Plateau State Governor Simon Lalong is charging community and religious leaders to expose killers within their various communities. Lalong gave the charge after he led a delegation of Church of Christ in Nations to the State House in Abuja. At the event, President Muhammad Buhari admitted he is distressed and depressed by the killings in the country. He appealed to Nigerians to learn to live together in peace and harmony. The one that came and put us back was the killing of the general. Was the killing of the general. And I've also charged community leaders, just like Mr. President said. I said, if you want to bring peace, if you want to, if you want to ensure there is peace in your place, community leaders and religious leaders must also come out to expose criminals within their domain. Mm -hmm. But when they commit crime and community leaders or religious leaders fight to protect them, that is when we have problems. If they had exposed the, 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 the killers of uh, Al-Kali earlier, 
Many things would have been solved. But there you have community leaders. There you have religious leaders who claim to be religious, who claim to be community leaders, hiding criminals. They may not like me, but that is what I am doing. I have charged them and I said, yes, you want government to work. If I catch you, if I catch, if you get this thing in your domain, you will hold the traditional ruler responsible. We will hold the community leader, leaders responsible. We cannot say that we live in a community and we don't know who are criminals and who are, who are good people. In the northeast, the Nigerian Air Force says its air tax force of Operation Lafayette Dole has destroyed a Boko Haram camp and killed several terrorists at Unguri, Ghana, in Borne State. A video by the Air Force shows structures belonging to members of the terrorist group in the community being targeted with fighter jets and attack helicopters. The Director of Air Force Public Relations and Information, Air Commodore Ibikunde Daramora, says the operation was carried out based on intelligence reports indicating that the settlement was one of the locations from where the insurgents launched attacks against troops and villages in the area. He added that intelligence, surveillance and reconnaissance missions later confirmed the report. Now, the Nigerian Senate is urging security agencies to thoroughly investigate the alleged assassination attempt on its deputy president, Ike Ikurimadu. The Senate passed a re uh, resolution uh, following a motion moved by Senator Eninaya Abaribe, who faulted the preliminary report of the police on the incident. The police spokesman, Jima Mashud, described the incident as a burglary and not an assassination attempt. But senators took exception to the report during the debate of Abaribe's motion, accusing the police of carrying out a, hundred, a hurried investigation without getting to the root of the matter. Ruling on the motion, President of the Senate, Bokola Saraki, said there was need to address the issue of professionalism in the police in the police reform bill currently before the Senate. Meanwhile, the federal government has admitted it is worried by the rising cases of insecurity in the federal capital territory. The Minister of Interior, Abdurrahman Dambazal, says the government is doing all it can to curb the incessant cases of robbery within the metropolis. The minister says all efforts are being done to equip the police better. He also revealed that the Federal Executive Council has approved the procurement of 116 vehicles at the cost of 1.5 billion naira for logistics in the prison service. The vehicles are to be called Green Maria as against Black Maria. The shift is part of reforms in the prison service. If you look at the trend of police, even in the last 16 years of the rest of, of the BDD era, uh, you find that uh, the situation today, I'm not saying that it's comfortable for us, uh, it's something we would not want. Uh, it's not that we can eliminate crime as a whole, but there's a limit that the, any society can tolerate. Uh, for instance, even in terms of investment, we need, you know, <coughs> So the government is doing everything possible, including uh, uh, reforming the police in terms of equipping, in terms of its training, uh, in terms of its welfare. Now back to the National Assembly. Now the Senate has ordered an investigation into an allegation that a government special intervention project fund meant for ordinary Nigerians is now being used as a campaign tool for the re-election of President Muhammad Buhari. Senate Minority Leader Biodun Olujimi says the fund has been politicized and its beneficiaries were asked to submit details of their permanent voters' cards, causing chaos during plenary. The Senate President Bukola Saraki says an ad hoc committee will be set up to investigate this claim. The Senate has slashed the budgets of ministries, departments and agencies to finance the 2019 general elections billed at 242 billion naira. The lawmakers had varied funds from service-wide votes in the 2018 appropriation to finance the 2019 general elections, but they have now reversed their decision by slashing funds from ministries, departments and agencies for the election. It follows a motion sponsored by the chairman of the Senate Committee on Appropriation, Danjuma Koje, who said the election could not be funded entirely from the service-wide vote as earlier approved. The motion, co-sponsored by 18 other senators, proposed that 121 billionaire be removed from the 30 agencies, while all the 121 billionaire be sussed from service-wide votes. 
President Mohamed Buhari has sworn in the chairman and members of the Code of Conduct Bureau and commissioners for National Population Commission. The president swore them in on Wednesday inside the council chamber of the State House Presidential Villa Abuja shortly before commencement of the meetings of the Federal Executive Council. Both sets of appointees were screened and cleared by the Nigerian Senate last month. Those sworn in for the CCB include Mohammed Issa, who will head the Buru. He hails from Chigawa State. Now, despite the best efforts of government officials and international agencies, thousands of Nigerians are still stranded in Libya. This is according to the Director General of National Agency for the Prohibition of Trafficking in Persons, who is appealing to state governors to sensitize Nigerians on the dangers of irregular migration. Thank you. In 2018 alone, the Nigerian government, with the assistance of the International Organization for Migration, IOM, has successfully repatriated over 10,000 Nigerians stuck in Libya. But with an average of 88 cases reported monthly, NAPTI believes that the secretive nature of trafficking is a major challenge for the fight. Don't forget that because of the situation in Libya, there are still some areas that are being controlled by the militias that are not accessible. But that is not to say the federal government has abandoned Nigerians that are there. Um, negotiations are still going on um, between the federal government and the Libyan authorities. Negotiations are also going on between international organizations and the militias to see how to rescue um, those that are trapped in um, places that are very difficult to, to reach. And um, I'm hoping, I'm very hopeful that uh, they will be returned back as soon as possible. The Director General has now charged state governments to fulfill their duties by arming citizens with useful information about human trafficking, particularly in rural areas. The state government should go on an orientation campaign in the states to ensure that people in the, in the, in the states believe in themselves, believe in Nigeria. And of course, those women who have too many children will begin to do family planning. The state government needs to play enough role to, to reduce trafficking from their states, in their states. Because, for example, the state government embarks on a campaign of cutting down the number of your children and embracing family planning. You will not have parents who think they have too many children. They cannot feed. Parents will begin to plan and they will only have children that they can take care of. So if a, a parent can take care of the child, it will be difficult for anyone to ask you to part with that kind of a child. She also advised Nigerians to be vigilant so as not to fall prey to enticing offers which may eventually endanger their lives. When you have people you know, offering you jobs abroad, offering you um, slots in the football academy, offering you modeling jobs, and so on and so forth, just check it out with NAPTIP. I mean, by now, people should be familiar with these stories and not even give it a second thought. But for the avoidance of doubt, call NAPTIP. According to the U.S. Department of State, about 600 to 800,000 people are trafficked across international borders every year, of which 80% are female and half are children. In Nigeria, NAPTIP, in conjunction with other agencies such as the Nigeria Immigration and Police, as well as the Joint Border Task Force, is seeking to ensure the safety of borders to control the scourge. Uni Adekunle, TV360, Nigeria. You're watching news now on TV360 Nigeria. There's more after this break. In the last three years, we have built a multi-purpose center which is the envy of all in our constituency. And I can tell you that the people who are living there are already enjoying it. Guy, do you think what this man just said is true? See, I seriously doubt. I'm sure it's one of those that are silly lies. And wait, do you know there's a way to find out if this thing he's saying is true or not? Ah. This is the construct app. It gives people like us a sure way to track implementation of constituency projects. It gives valid and verified information on location of projects, amounts allocated, amounts funded, the level of job done, and even the profiles of concerned legislators. 
you and I can post directly on this app. Are you serious? This is the Go Tour app. If you want to know how our Commonwealth is being expanded by the government. Wow. Let's even see if what this man said is true. Show me. The Construct app is developed by other people in Nigeria with support from USAID and is available on both Google Play Store and Apple Store. Eh, that is true. <laughs> of course, I told you. You're welcome back. It's now time for business. Hello, Esther. Uh, hi, Annette. So, what's the latest in business today? Well, actually, the Federal Executive Council has approved the augmentation of the runway project of the Namdi Azikiwe International Airport in Abuja. Now, it's augmented with a sum of 628 million naira. The Minister of Transportation says the augmentation brings the contract sum to 6.8 billion naira. He also says the additional fund is to aid the additional scope of the work on the runway. Viewed, and the cabinet approved uh, the increase of 628 million, 123,590 naira Cisco as a variation on the job, which then will bring the entire contract to 6.5 billion naira. The emergence of e-commerce businesses in Nigeria has proven to have positive impacts on the Nigerian economy growth and development in the micro, small and medium scale enterprises. Now in this next interview, the CEO of Jumia Nigeria, Juliet Anama, speaks on how Jumia supports the government in developing the framework to guide e-commerce businesses in Nigeria. What we do is in terms of helping government agencies in particular to understand how e-commerce operates. Uh, because even though uh, it is a section of retail, it is a sub subsector of the total retail market. But because it's digital, uh, there are some different there's some differentiation there. So making them understand how that operates, how it has advanced in other countries, and what is coming ahead and therefore how they can support, because regulation is not just about constricting, regulation is also about supporting. The government wants to support it so it can grow, but grow in a way that is you know, positive for the economy and positive for consumers. So we share a lot of information. We've had sessions with Consumer Protection Council. We have ongoing uh, collaboration with Standards Organization of Nigeria and many other agencies, just to make sure that we are constantly giving them as much information as possible for, uh, for them to shape the right policies that are relevant for the industry. So that's, that's what we should do, and that's what we keep doing. Um, in, some, in some respects, also, uh, we've participated where there have been some legal frameworks to give our own opinion on what we think, uh, based on what we see happens in other global environments, is relevant for, for e-commerce and relevant for Nigeria. So we, we make our own pre presentations in terms of what we propose. Uh, we give recommendations and then we, we have one-on-one -on -one engagements with different agencies uh, to support. The Nigerian government has dismissed the report that the United States Department of Agriculture, World Markets and Trade, and Nigeria imported 3 million metric tons of rice in 2018. And the Minister of Information and Culture, Lai Mohammed, also says a TICO campaign organization erred by replying on what he described as fake reports by the U.S. Department of Agriculture. Now, the minister has contacted the Central Bank of Nigeria and the Comptroller General of Customs, who have also confirmed the story is false. The records are very clear as to importation of rice. You don't have to take my words, but go to Thailand rice millers, and the figures are there. In 2014, 1 1.2 million metric tons of rice was exported. To Nigeria. In 2015, 644,000 metric tons was, was exported by them, and we imported it. 
By 2016, it went out with 5,000 metric tons. These are not my figures. These are the figures of the Thailand Rice Producer Association. And the claim, the first claim that rice, local rice production is in decline, again, absolutely false. And yesterday when I spoke to the millers, one of them said, please, just come to Kano. Come to my factory. You are going to see two kilometer length of trailers waiting to discharge paddy rice. So I want to say categorically, categorically again, without any fair contradiction, that the Anchor Grass Program is working. Nigeria has been able to reduce by 90% the $1.65 billion it was paid yearly on rice importation, that the number of integrated rice processing mills increased from 13 to 25, those are the majors, and that between the smaller ones and the big ones, today the capacity is 4.9 metric tons of rice. And that's why we are confident that in a year plus, we're going to meet the 6 million metric tons production, which is our local consumption. In the global oil markets, oil prices dipped on Wednesday as rising output and U.S. sanction waivers that allow Iran's biggest buyers to keep taking its crude reinforce the outlook for a well-supplied market. Brent crude features were at $71.99 a barrel, while U.S. crude was at $61.84 a barrel, down 37 cents. Brent crude and West Texas Intermediate have supplied slumped by 17.4 and 19.7 percent respectively from recent peaks touched in early october washington reimposed sanctions against iran's oil exports on monday but granted waivers to its biggest customers allowing them limited imports for the next 180 days but iran's supply is expected to rise after november as waivers are used to start ordering more iranian oil and now, now we're going to take a look at the trading session in today's equities market With more gainers than losers recorded in today's trading session, shares of Zenit Bank appreciated by 0.63%. As Zenit Bank Women's League defending champions, Fest Bank, faced Dolphins today in the final of Zenit Bank Women's League National. That's in basketball. Now being the center of attention, the bank recorded almost 300 million shares worth almost 7 billion naira being transacted after se several hours of trading. Now also on the top traders chart with Fest Bank of Nigeria holding... Guarantee Trust Bank and First City Monument Bank. Now, 29 gainers were led by Nigerian breweries, Fits in Healthcare, Red Star Express, and the United Bank for Africa. Meanwhile, on the flip side, 17 losers were led by Seplet, Wapco, that's Lafarge Africa, Presco, and Dangote Sugar. Now, recording more shares traded in today's session, watch over 300% of the total value of shares turned in in yesterday's bullish market. The NSC closed the market to the market capitalization at 11.722 trillion naira and the all share index at 32.108.30 basis point now closing in the negative territory with a 1.014 percent drop now let's see who else is trading is trading in um in the downs today who else is in a bearish market today we have um nikkei actually they were they had a bullish run yesterday, but today they closed with a 0.28% drop in their market, in their in key market indicators, actually. And FTSE regained from yesterday's bearish run to close at a 0.99% rise in its all share index. Dow Jones, that's the American stock exchange, closed with a 1.03% rise in key market indicators. Anetta? 
Yes, thank you for that update, Esther. Food sales in the low yesterday. We see it rise today by 0.99%. The Dow Jones, that's really interesting because you see how U.S. politics, you know, is affecting this. Investors are actually cautious. You know, they, they're not, they don't want to, uh, you know, place bets, you know, because they're not certain about the outcome of the elections if the Democrats or the Republic, uh, Republicans are actually going to win this one. But, uh, of course, Nikkei in Japan also declining as against its record yesterday. Well, considering the fact that they recently lost all of the against recorded this season. I think 1.03 is actually not quite bad for today, but yeah, you're right. As usual, the elections will always determine what goes on in the stock market. That's true, Esther. So moving on, we'll see how uh, the updates of some pupils kidnapped in Cameroon right after this. Do stay with us. Corruption not in my country. Caught. All right. What's your name again? Kemi? Good. Are you ready for us for next week? Yes, sir. Next. Do no, no, sir. Do. No. What? Look, what we need here is one who can speak fluent English. Give her a chance. I need a angel to hold me. Hold me, my beautiful angel. Cut! It is angel, not angel. Please, I'm done with you. Excuse us. Yeah. Kemi was far better. It's not about a rendition. It's not about our performance here. By the time she and her friends join us in our hotel room, <laughs> you will know how far. Can I have her phone? She has a robust profile. She's a real robust profile. I do not undercut professional ethics. It is an act of corruption. Not in my country. Corruption not in my country. Stop corruption now. Pupils kidnapped from a Presbyterian boarding school in Cameroon three days ago have been released. According to the school authorities, about 79 children were taken from their dormitories by armed men on Sunday night. Some eyewitnesses say they were being bitten and lectured on the living conditions at the school before the attackers left to the principal, a teacher, the driver and the students. The principal and the teacher are still missing and it is yet unclear who took them and why. The Liberian police have arrested more than 40 people following massive looting at the facility of a Turkish gold mining company. The looting was reportedly triggered by a collision between the company's pickup truck and a motorcycle carrying four people. All four people on the motorcycle died while the driver of the pickup truck survived. Coach Thomas Denaby has announced his final 21-player squad for the 2018 African Women Cup of Nations. The Super Falcons are hoping to defend the title they won two years ago in Cameroon, but they must negotiate their way past South Africa, Kenya and Zambia in Group B. It's in year old Rashidat Ajibade will be making her debut Women Cup of Nations appearance alongside Kazakhstan-based Chuwendu Uwezo. The attacking lineup is completed by Desire Oparanozi, Asisat Ushola, Anam Imu, Chinanza Uchenju, and Francesca Odega. Nigeria square up against South Africa in the opening game on November 18 at the Cape Coast Sports Stadium. Neymar is demanding that the referee in charge of PSG's 1-1 draw with Napoli is punished after he said something he regarded disrespectful. The Brazil star was left fuming after the match following the exchange with Beyond Coopers. It is not clear what the referee said, but pictures from the game show Neymar being held back, uh, held back by teammates Kylian Mpape as he exchanged hit words with the experienced referee. He says he deserves the same respect he gives to referees. And that's the World Update, the news now on TV360 Nigeria. You can watch other interesting programs on our YouTube page and follow us on all social media platforms at TV360 Nigeria. Thanks for watching. I am Annetta Felix.